Many people think that virtual tourism, also referred to as virtual reality tourism, was a temporary fad as a response to not being able to travel during the COVID pandemic. And whilst there is an element of truth to this, this is only part of the virtual tourism story. In fact, this innovative form of tourism has been growing behind the scenes for many years. Virtual tourism is all around us, from the marketing materials that we access, to trip planning, to the tourism experience, to the post-vacation activities. But what exactly is virtual tourism and how is it used in the tourism industry? Well, I'm going to tell you all about that in this video. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Hayley Stainton and I'm here to educate you all about travel and tourism. So what actually is virtual tourism? Virtual tourism is essentially a hybrid concept. It combines both the notions of virtual reality and tourism. In essence, virtual tourism facilitates a tourism experience without actually having to travel anywhere. Virtual tourism takes many different forms and comes in varying degrees of technological capability. In its simplest form, virtual tourism may comprise of a video of a tourist's destination. The tourist watches the video, utilising their hearing and their sight senses. More sophisticated forms of virtual tourism include being immersed in an environment through the use of a headset or a simulator. It may involve use of various props, users may be required to wear gloves, and there may be additional sensations such as movement, like a roller coaster simulator, feeling like being sprayed with water, and smell. Virtual tourism covers a broad spectrum of digitally mediated reality, which includes virtual reality, as well as mixed reality and augmented reality. In fact, the growth of virtual activities expands far beyond the reach of the tourism industry. People are now buying houses without actually seeing them in person, having felt that a virtual tour was sufficient. People are visiting museums via virtual tours and teachers are using virtual realities to enhance the educational experience for their students. Virtual reality has become ingrained in our everyday life. In the tourism industry, virtual reality has been most commonly used as a marketing tool. Destination management organisations, tour operators and tourist attractions have been using virtual reality as a means of promoting for some time now, hoping that the virtual reality experience will entice tourists and bring in new business. We have also seen a growing popularity in the use of virtual reality as an additionality to physical tourism experiences. At a theme park, for example, there may be a mix of actual rides and virtual rides. Museums will often enhance their exhibitions with virtual presentations and activities. And we have also, of course, seen a growth of virtual reality as an alternative to the physical experience. The COVID pandemic, which resulted in the world largely coming to a halt and immobilising the tourism industry almost completely, meant that people were confined to their homes and travel and tourism businesses were closed. So people turned to the next best alternative, virtual tourism. A range of media can be used to facilitate a virtual experience, such as mobile devices or software programs. Virtual tourism is a term that encapsulates the broad spectrum of virtual experiences available within the tourism sector. From watching a promotional video through an interactive museum experience, to experiencing an entire holiday through virtual means in a style similar to the computer game Second Life or the film Avatar. Essentially, virtual tourism can be defined as the use of technology to artificially enhance or create a tourism experience. So let's talk a little bit about the growth of virtual tourism, how we've got to where we are today. The tourism industry has seen a slow but steady growth in the use of virtual reality throughout recent years. A report by Research and Markets published in 2019 suggested that the tourism industry would see strong growth in virtual tourism in the coming years. Nobody at this point could have predicted that the tourism industry would come to an almost complete halt as a result of the pandemic, so this has actually made this happen even faster. It radically fueled both the development and demand for virtual tourism forms. So there have really been five phases to the development and the growth of the virtual tourism industry. To begin with, tourism industry stakeholders, namely destination management organisations, tour operators and others operating in the marketing sphere used virtual tourism as a marketing tool. Virtual evidence of how wonderful the holiday or the tourist experience would be would lull in visitors much easier than the traditional methods of holiday brochures, guidebooks 
or even websites. Seeing and hearing an experience is a great way to convince and tempt a person to pull out their credit card as they eagerly anticipate the real deal. Marketing and promotion was really the start of the development of the virtual tourism industry. Phase two was when we saw the tourism experience really start to be enhanced through the use of virtual tourism. Recent years have seen a growing number of tourism businesses adopt virtual technologies as a means of enhancing their tourism experience. From the introduction of 5D rides at theme parks, to sensory activities being used at museums, a range of tourist attractions have seen enhanced visitor satisfaction after introducing virtual tourism. We then saw these virtual tourism experiences really start to be enhanced during phase three. Whilst virtual tourism experiences do vary in theme and in technological capabilities, they generally rely on the premise that they will provide the user with an artificial tourism experience. And typically, these virtual tourism experiences will condense an experience to include only the highlights or the best bits. For example, a five hour safari may be shortened to a few minutes, cutting out all of the time that the tourist would usually spend searching for wildlife and including only the actual wildlife sightings. While these types of virtual experiences have been on the cards for a while, they did not really begin to receive recognition until the COVID pandemic, which introduced a period of time when people were turning to virtual tourism because they couldn't physically travel. And that leads us to phase four, which was when physical holidays began to be replaced with virtual tourism experiences. Travel lovers the world over who were desperate for an experience that might replicate the holiday that they were forced to cancel or the trip that they longed to take but they couldn't because of COVID were forced to pursue alternative ways to take their holiday. Despite an initial outlook being that virtual holidays would be unlikely to ever replace physical holidays, the tourism industry was radically transformed overnight. During this time, a large number of tech companies began to work around the clock alongside tourism industry stakeholders to develop innovative tourism approaches that could be utilised in the current climate. Once the pandemic is over around the world, it is anticipated that this demand will dramatically decline. However, there is now a new receptiveness and a willingness to undertake virtual tourism in ways that cannot be physically achieved. And the fifth phase of virtual tourism development is the impossible adventures that can be achieved. It's likely that the future of the virtual tourism industry will see people seeking impossible adventures through virtual means. An impossible adventure could be a person visiting a destination virtually because they can't afford to do so physically, or somebody going deep sea diving because they can't physically swim, for example. An impossible adventure could also include experiences that are currently unavailable to humans, such as flying above your favourite city or walking on the moon. Throughout all of this, there is a significant reliance on technology, and indeed, there is a direct correlation between the growth of the virtual tourism industry and global technological capabilities. As I mentioned before, virtual tourism comes in all shapes and sizes, and I have summarised the types of virtual tourism into five main categories. Try before you buy. As I mentioned previously, in its early form, virtual tourism focused around the concept of marketing. Virtual reality and virtual experience software allows potential customers to try before they buy. This form of marketing has been proven to be very successful and thus many tourism based organisations are continuing to actively pursue and develop forms of virtual reality marketing. Using virtual tourism as a marketing tool is particularly useful when the cost of the product or service sold is high. For example, British Airways developed a virtual tour of their business class only aircraft operating between London City Airport and New York. This allows potential customers to trial out a service and to explore the aircraft prior to committing to pay for the ticket. Visiting real places without leaving your sofa. Google Earth has really become a game changer in the realms of virtual tourism. Google Earth allows you to explore areas throughout the world at the touch of a button. It's pretty amazing. Whether you want to take a look at the street down the road or to see a tourist attraction on the other side of the world, almost every part of the world is now documented by the Google camera. Many organisations will adopt similar principles too, whereby you can use software to virtually tour a specific area. This could be a house, a forest or a tourist attraction to give just a few examples. Visiting places of the past. 
One of the great technological feats of virtual tourism is the ability to recreate destinations or attractions from the past. Using current images alongside computer generation projects, developers are able to design software which allows tourists to experience types of tourism that are no longer available. Some programs allow users to toggle the time and transport themselves to any time or place they wish. And it's not only tourism operators who are developing such software either. Visiting areas that are inaccessible. There are, believe it or not, still parts of the world that are off limits. This could be because we can't afford to travel there, or it could be because the location is so remote that we can't reach it. Or maybe the area is simply closed off to visitors. Whilst this was a barrier to travel in the past, it isn't anymore. With the advent of virtual tourism, there is no part of the world that is inaccessible any longer. Visiting areas that do not exist. The final type of virtual tourism, and one that is yet to really take off, is the ability to visit areas that don't actually exist. Second Life is the most well-known platform that offers this type of virtual tourism. It is effectively an online world in which you are able to create a virtual representation of yourself called an avatar and connect with various places and people and have various adventures in a place that isn't actually real. There's no denying that the future is in technology and virtual tourism is just one way that we can enhance an experience and make totally new experiences too. Have you done any of these types of virtual tourism? Let me know in the comments. And if you have enjoyed this video, give me a like.